Praise the Lord, everyone. Back with you once again. Um, last week, we talked about, are you armored up? This week, we're going to continue that conversation into another topic. And the thing is, Paul talked about putting on the armor of God, and then after having on the armor of God, doing something else, standing. Because when we get out there, sometimes that's all we can do is stand. Sometimes in battle, even in in warfare that we see in the world, in the flesh, sometimes just holding that hill that you got, that is yours, is all you can do in the battle. And it is better to hold what you got than to lose any space that you have. So he said, stand. So when we think about what to stand means, that is basically enduring. Amen. Sometimes we just have to endure. And that's why we have on the arm and armor is to protect us. But we ourselves in ourself, we have to endure. We have to make up in our minds that we're not giving up. We're not turning around. We're not putting down our sword. We're not putting down our shield. We're not tucking tail and we're not running. We have to endure. So Jesus talked about, in a way, about endurance in the 13th chapter of Matthew when he's talking about the sower to his disciples. And we know the story. And if you don't, read it. It's in Matthew, the 13th chapter, about the sower. And the sower, Jesus said, there went out a sower. The sower planted on different types of ground is the main thing of the story he planted some fell by the wayside and he said the fowls of the air they ate them up that's the birds and in the spirit that's the enemy you know somebody give you the word of god and you don't quite grasp it but you you know it's sown on your soul and in your heart but you don't get it and so the devil comes and he robs you of that thing he takes it From you. Amen. Just like a bird does. We see it out in agriculture when farmers, when they plant corn, sometimes some corn falls on the ground and a bird comes and eats it up. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't go in the ground. It doesn't grow up. It doesn't produce anything because the fowl of the air came and ate it up. That's the enemy. But there was also some other ground, some stony ground. He said, you know, it fell on the stony ground. It sprung up, but it had no depthness in it. And so when the sun came, it couldn't endure. The sun burnt it up. Amen? And plant something on top of the ground and water and see that it does that. I remember planting little seedlings in cups, little cups. And they would grow up real fast if you had it in a certain warm place in the house with light. it grew up super fast. But... It would fall over because it didn't have the depthness that it needed to stand. So it couldn't endure. And he also talked about that which fell among thorns. And so they couldn't endure as well. The cares of this life, deceitfulness of riches, it just swallowed them up, choked that word out, and the word became no good to them. But when the word fell on good ground, it said, you know, it got to where it needed. They endured. That word was able to endure in them because they wanted it. They kept it. They made a fight to keep it and to make it theirs and to endure at all costs to keep it. And it did wonders. It brought forth, he said, a hundredfold. I believe it said 60, some 30. So we have to endure. Amen. We have to not only just be here, we have to endure, which means we don't change what we are given. Amen. If God give you a block, you don't go around and you tell him it's a circle. It is what he says it is. And you will contend with those that will tell you otherwise. Amen. That's what we have to do with the word of God that God has given to us as well. When it's given to us, we have to endure sound doctrine. Paul talks about this thing when he's writing to Timothy, the young man who is like a son to him. In the second book of Timothy, and you can read this. It's the fourth chapter, verse 1 through 5. You can read it. He said, there's a time coming. He warns Timothy of it. There's a time coming when folks won't endure sound doctrine. But what they'll do is they'll run out there, they'll get somebody that will teach them and preach to them things that they like to hear 
because they got what? Itching ears. So they want to hear a certain thing. They don't want to hear the word of God. They don't want to endure it is what he said. They don't want to endure sound doctrine. They don't want to have to commit to what God has said. They want to be free. They want to be like the song. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. But when it comes to God, there is no it's your thing. Because why? He paid the price. Amen. You couldn't save your soul even if you tried. He said you can gain the whole world. He said, what does it profit if a man gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So that tells me that there is no man. That can save himself. So when you think about it, it's not your thing. Amen. It is that it belongs to Christ. He paid for it with his life, with his blood. And so now it belongs to him. Now he has mercy with us and some stuff he lets slide. But the thing is, we should be worried about what he is saying. We should endure what he has given to us. Amen. If he's given it to you. Don't let no man steal it from you. Amen. And there's a there's a reward to enduring. Amen. You're not just doing this in vain. Amen. We're not just picking up the word of God and toting it just to be toting it and then get to the end and get nothing. Amen. As servants of God, we should be willing to do this thing because he paid for us. And if that was all that he did for us. That, you know. That's awesome. But he has a reward for us, those that endure. Paul talks about it. After he tells Timothy about enduring sound doctrine, that folks are not going to want to hear what you got to say when it comes to shacking up. Folks are going to get upset and they're going to tell you, nah, man, I can do what I want to do. You know, hush all that up. When they come to tell you that, when you tell them that, Men with men is not right. Women with women is not right. It's against what the word of God says. We have to endure that. Amen. Regardless of what the world says. And it's not our word. It's not us judging. It is love when we endure it. Amen. Because let me tell you this. If you bent to the stuff of the world. If you bent to. What is the popular thing on the land that everybody's falling out for to do. If you bent to that every time, you would lose what you have and you would chase after something that is nothing. But if you hold to it, you're showing love. Amen. When you warn your neighbor about the sin that is in that he has before him, it's not to to ridicule him. It's not to make fun of him. It's not to belittle him. It is to show love to say, brother, I don't want you to die and go to hell. I don't want you to get tore up. If you loved your neighbor, if there was a hole in the street and he couldn't see it and you warned him, that's the love. Amen. It's the same thing with sin. That's why there has to be somebody enduring. And then by enduring. Let's get back to what happened with Paul. Paul said, you know, he's done all that he's done. He done fought his fight. Basically, he done went through the things he had to go through. His time, he said, it's up. So, he said, there's laid up something for him. There's a crown laid up for him. Amen? That's the reward for enduring. Amen? Your labor not in vain. If you think it's in vain, I'm here to tell you, it's not in vain. Keep enduring, my brother, my sister. Don't give up hope. Don't change your, your word to please and accommodate the world. You keep what God given to you. And you endure. When you look in Revelations, Christ talks to the different, the seven different churches and the angels of the church or basically the pastors of those churches. He talks to them. And he goes through each one. He says, yep, you got this going on. You got that going on. But when he gets to Philadelphia, he talks good about them. And let's look at that. Because I want you to hear it. Amen. I want you to get the importance of enduring because some folks get it and a lot of folks don't. They think that, man, living that way is just I can get into, uh, you know, doing what I want to do. And at the end, I can come. True. But you could have had a better reward. 
And that mindset is not a guarantee that you will make it. But this is what he says in Revelations, the third chapter. And it's verses 7 through 13. And it says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that have the key of David, he that have openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, they've endured, and has not denied my name. They didn't give it up. They endured. They kept what Christ gave to them. They didn't deny his name and say, I don't know you. When folks said, man, is that what y'all believe? They didn't say, nah, man, we don't believe that. They endured. They said, this is what we believe. This is the word of God. We're not giving it up for it, to have a few minutes of pleasure with you and then go to hell. No, we're going to endure and keep this word. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. They endured it. They didn't throw it down. I also will keep thee thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. So this, he said, you won't get that temptation. You, you'll you miss it. You'll endure. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. That's the part of enduring. That's why you cannot give up. When you give up and you lay down everything that you've went through, you lay down everything that Christ has given to you, You throw away everything that he had sacrificed for. Amen. Then the enemy takes your crown. Amen. So you cannot give up. He said, come quickly. Keep it so that nobody can take it from you. Hold it fast. That means when they come to yank on, you said, no, this is mine. I'm not giving it up for you. I'm not. You value it. He said, he that is faithful in the least it's faithful in the great, greatest, basically. So, he says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from God. And I will write upon him my new name. <clears throat> he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So, we have to endure. It doesn't matter what Billy says. It doesn't matter what Tabitha may say. It doesn't matter what Betty or Sue says. What matters is what Christ has given to you and has delivered to you and what you know to be true from Him. That's what matters. And I implore you, I advise you, I beg you to keep what you have that God has given to you. If he says, my brother, take this word and hold on to it, I don't care what the other folks say. I don't care what the other folks do. I don't care if they look at you and they laugh at you. I want you to endure. And I promise you, I can't promise you. I take that back. I can't promise you because I'm a man. But I can guarantee the word not me. The word can guarantee you that you will not lose your reward if you endure in Christ. So, God bless you. Take this word. Apply it to your lives. And go search the scriptures. It's here. It's here the rewards for enduring. God bless you. Happy Sabbath. Have a good day.